Hi guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. This is another session. I know that uh, I had promised this video earlier, but I wasn't able to do it due to unavoidable circumstances, but here I am and I'm going to do it. So first of all is to thank you guys for watching my videos. Thank you, my subscribers, uh, for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed and you're new here, please consider subscribing. Today I am going to talk about different questions that have been asked. And uh, just uh, before I dive into there, my name is Charity Nganga. Uh, Charity is Bubble USA, your number one channel. This is my channel where I talk about USA. And like I say, I normally just like to give a small introduction of myself if for that person who is new here. I talk about uh, living here in the US. I talk about the way I came in, the method, uh, like the, 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 the how I came into the US. I came here with a DV lot. I'm a first time DV lottery winner and I've been here for close to eight years. So I like to talk about uh, my experience when I came here. I also like to talk about that process because, uh, and I have a hiccup, a very bad one that's not going away. Um, because when I was coming in, I did not know much. And uh, since I started this, I can see the quest that people really want to know about the DV lottery. They also want to know about uh, that whole pr process up to the time that you come and settle in the U.S., how you settle, and so many things. So it gives me motivation just to go on and do this because I know that someone out there, when they watch this video, uh, they, maybe they want to go to the website because some people do not even know the right website. Uh, they can get as much help uh, as they can to immigrate because um, moving from your country where you have settled, you have started your life. It's not an easy thing, guys. It's not an easy thing. It takes a lot of courage. And uh, if you have just some light of where you are going or someone who has experienced something like that, it's a little bit easier and it's a little bit better. So we're going to talk about uh, some questions here uh, that were asked by people. So there's this one uh, who was telling, talking about bags, uh, how many you should carry. Now, uh, the first thing that I'm not going to talk about is that how much are you allowed to carry? Every person is supposed to carry two bags and a carry-on. That is every passenger in a plane. And your bag should not exceed 23 kilos. That is 50 pounds. Hmm? It should not exceed 23 kilos. So you find that both of your bags, it should be 23 kilos, and then you have a carry-on. Normally, they do not uh, with the carry-on because the carry-on is just something small. Now, Having known that, those are the regulations of the plane, and they are going to weigh your bags. So make sure that uh, when you are packing your bags, you have weighed them, and they weigh exact. Because if they are more, you will be forced to remove your luggage, and uh, sometimes you won't have anybody to take it back. So you have to look at that. Now, uh, the best thing I can tell you guys is that when you're immigrating to come here in the US, there is no point of carrying so many clothes. Because the clothes that are worn in Africa, they are not the ones that are on here here we wear clothes with seasons hmm? like now it's winter you find that there are so many coats so many boots uh, a lot of hats a lot of gloves and they are made in a special way whereby they keep people warm when it comes to winter it's very very light clothing hmm? very very light clothing so you find that sometimes the clothes that you will come in from africa they are really really not gonna be they they are good but they are not gonna be appropriate for the weather Mm -hmm. So just carry a little bit. Uh, even the, the, the dressing, you find that people here tend to wear a lot of trousers. We call them pants and uh, tops. So it's just casual wear. So let's assume that you have your suits that you have out there. Uh, you find that those ones, uh, they, they really, really, people do not really, really wear those ones. You find that someone who is wearing a suit when they are going maybe for a wedding or a funeral or maybe for a party, and that is the dress code. That is when you will find people wearing such stuff. So you find that when you're carrying the clothes that you're carrying, it's good just carry a little bit. Maybe carry some clothes that you can just wear for a week. Mm? And then, because when you come here, you can either go buy clothes. There are stores that sell clothes very cheap, and uh, that is how you will survive. Because even you find that the job that you will do, there is a certain uniform that you will be wearing. And most of the time you'll be wearing the room because like for example like me i am a nurse i wear scrubs hmm? scrubs i use just as some kind of pants and a top that i go with to work 
and uh, you find that my clothes, like like these clothes that I'm wearing right now, maybe I can put them on when I am going to church or maybe when I am doing a show here. So you find that you won't be wearing these clothes all the time. Mm? You know, I was thinking the other time before I started like doing my, my YouTube shows, there are so many clothes that I had that I hadn't even worn. Mm? So you find that do not carry so many don't carry so many clothes just carry a little bit because you will end up are uh, not even using them you'll end up maybe giving them out so make sure that uh, you put that into, into consideration when you're coming here because clothes are very cheap and of course you'll have friends who will give you so many clothes like clothes are left and right mm? they are left and right and even if you go to the store you buy them very cheap so don't don't even bother yourself to carry a lot of luggage it's not gonna help you uh, much now there is another one who was asking about maintenance, the cost of a car and the maintenance of a car. I had mentioned that when you come in here, the best thing for you to do is to buy a cheap car, a very cheap car. Uh, maybe you can buy from $3,000 to $4,000 uh, because you find that the cost of maintenance is very, very high. So you can buy a car that you know that is going to help you from point A to point B and is not going to be breaking down. Because here... It is not like uh, the way in Africa you go that you find a mechanic anywhere and they can uh, repair your car maybe and ask you maybe for like a hundred shillings or whatever. No, here it's very, very expensive. So it's always good even if you're buying a cheap car, make sure that you are buying a car that is not going to, doesn't have a lot of high mileage. And uh, of course, uh, it doesn't have a lot of accidents because uh, when they check the, the, the car that they are selling to you they can tell this car maybe was involved in an accident or all that because all, all that goes in record if an accident happens and of course mileage is something else to consider because the more my the more the more the mileage the car has the more it's, it it will tend to give you trouble so because you are new excuse me because you are new of course you i won't tell you like to go and buy a car that is worth forty thousand dollars or whatever but go get a car that um going to help you another thing is that uh if you uh, make sure that you are in good terms with your host because your host can co-sign with you and you get a like worth like maybe ten thousand dollars if you get such a car it won't have a very high mileage and at the same time you'll be making payments every month but if you are by yourself and you're very new you might not be able to get that one uh because uh, you don't have good credit but if uh, your host this to co-sign with you, you can get a car that's like ten thousand dollars, and maybe in a month you'll be paying like uh, maybe um, two hundred dollars, and then from there you can make your payments for like five years or six years, and then you finish, and that car can give you service. Hmm? Because sometimes you can go and buy a car, maybe you go buy a car for like two thousand, and all the time it is asking for something. You do not wanna go that route that all the time that you're going to the mechanic. At the same time. You do not want to get a car that will stop in the highway and nobody is going to come to help you, that you have to call your friends to come and uh, bail you out because your car stopped in the highway. So those are some of the considerations that you have to think about uh, when you're buying a car. Unless you're a mechanic or wherever you're coming from and you know that you will buy a car that will give you trouble, the best thing is to buy a car that will take you from point A from point B, doesn't have a very mi high mileage and doesn't have accidents. That one can help you. Uh, very much now there's another one who was asking me about the host mm? she is she, he he said hi charity he and we are hosting do i have to stay in somebody's home or can i arrange before with my host to assist my family to rent an affordable flat on an apart and since i don't have credit score in the u.s i know the host will have to assist yes the host will have to assist uh but uh sometimes uh, it, it might not work because when you're going to rent a ha house um they they normally want to know how many people are going to stay in that house and whatever and uh, most people are not gonna agree so to some extent when you are an um an immigrant you will have to be hosted for some extent you will have to be hosted even if it's for one week before you get a house and you know not every host is gonna agree to co-sign with you to, to get a house so the, the norm mm, that is a i would say it's like a tradition when you win a dv lottery you will be hosted for a little bit and then you will get your own house and another thing that you have to consider is that a, a house will cost you like fifty thousand kenya shillings i'm gonna give you an example of sh shillings in kenya and uh maybe you can go convert the dollars uh in, in your country so like let's assume the apartment that you got is like five hundred dollars it is not only the five hundred dollars that you will have to pay for you have to think about uh that you will pay for 
maybe they'll tell you to pay a little bit of deposit, maybe like $150. Maybe that will be like $650. Uh, they might, uh, of course, you have to consider. There's so much, guys. There's so much <gasps> that you'll find that you'll spend a lot of money uh, when you are um, when you're renting a house, when you come from a foreign land. So I would advise you to stay with your host. And then after you are on your feet and you have gotten a job, hmm, then you will be able to whatever. Because if your host is renting a house for you, they normally want to, to know how are you going to be making your payments. They don't care about that money that you're paying at that time. No. Hmm? And another thing is that when you're renting a house, even if it is your host, there's no way your host is going to rent a house and say it's for another person. They will not be allowed. Because when you're renting a house, you have to give out your social and they do a background check on you. So you find that that one might not work. So you have to be hosted first. And then after you have been hosted, then after you get a job, because they will have to see that you are working somewhere and you will be able to pay the rent. And of course, they will need a social for the people who will be living in that house, especially the adults. They do the background check so that you can get into that house. So that might not work very well. So the route is always to, to have a host, even if you have so much money, come with your money and then you can arrange with your host. If your host is agreeing to help you, then they can do, do that. And that's also a very, very good question. So I said about um, the weight, uh, it should be 23 kilos. Huh? That is like 50, 50. And if you, if you exceed, it's gonna be 52 pounds. And that's it, uh, you can't exceed beyond that. Uh, when you are carrying uh, your luggage uh, from the plane. Now, there's another one. Hello, I'm Rampaye from Uganda. I completed Form 4 and I didn't go to high school, but I did some courses. Um, in some two courses for one another for two years after. Though I'm not working, are, are they going to go to deny me the visa? No, they will not because uh, you have qualified because of your... Uh, no. If you com completed Form 4 and you have your certificate, you have already qualified. It doesn't matter what the work that you are doing. So that one you have uh, qualified. So um, uh, so if you have gone to high school, then you have you have qualified. Hmm? You have qualified uh, whatever uh, to for the DV lottery. It only if you don't you only, you only do not qualify if you didn't go to high school. That is when you need to to produce a minimum work experience of two years. Hmm? So it's very 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 important for you. To, to know that if you have gone to high school, you have already qualified. It doesn't matter the job that you're doing. It does not uh, matter. So uh, depending on the school that you're going, I've seen that people have uh, con uh, continued comment commenting here. You find that the secondary school, that is four years because they count um, they, ca they count your primary school and they count your secondary school. Mm, that is high school. I know the, the other two is higher education. Higher education is from five and from six. That is high as no secondary so if you have reached form four you qualify because that's what they want they want an equivalent to your high school and that is what they call GED. gd if you have gone up to form six it's well and good that's an addition but if you have gone up to high school or secondary school <laughs> that's okay you qualify now so uh let me see um yeah so this one uh this one was about if it was about a DV lottery and you went to high school, you are good to go. Hmm? If you did not go to high school, that's when you need to produce uh, your work experience because I see um, the, this question was talked about a lot. And then there's another one, high charity. Can someone who filled forms, including family, go to America alone? Let's say I want to live alone in America without family. No, you cannot. You, you filled out your family, you go to the embassy with them, and then you can leave them, and then uh, they have to be in the U.S., before six months is over because when you're going to file for your citizenship or whatever you will be questioned where did your family go if you had a family because if you had a family and you want to come and live alone here they will say that you abandoned your family abandonment is wrong here in the u.s you cannot abandon your family so if you had put your family there know that you it's you and your family hmm? so even if you're not able to immigrate with them at the same time the first time you will leave them but after six months you have to come for them unless they do not want to come unless they, they 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 say on their embassy they tell the consular that they do not intend to immigrate because nobody for is forced but you cannot abandon them and say that you are all the only one who is going to benefit from that they will deny you the visa if you are planning to leave your family behind like abandonment unless your family has agreed so it's very very important uh to do that uh so this one is saying uh 
they have 11 years for 11 and two years for institution. Uh, so am I qualifying? And I applying, uh, and I remember I applied for DV 2023. Yes, you do qualify. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you do qualify because they need 12 years of education. That is 80, 80 years you have gone to primary school. I still have a, a hiccup, guys, excuse me. And then four years for high school. You qualify uh, for that, uh, for that. Okay, yes. So uh, the Rampaya Tione said, okay, let's wait uh, and hear. Yes, you qualify if you've gone for 12 years because that means that you went to primary school and then you went to high school for four years. But you must have a certificate, guys. You must have a certificate. So this one says, so this one was saying uh, they want to go to America without family. Yes, it's possible, but you must go to the interview with them. But they have to refuse, guys, because when you go to the interview with them, they will be given a visa that is six months. Unless they tell the consular that they do not wish to immigrate and live in the U.S., that's okay. You, you, you will be off the hook. But you cannot tell the consular that this is my family and I want to, to leave them here and go and live in the U.S. alone. It doesn't work like that no it does not work like that if you have a family you have a family and they believe that that is your family you cannot abandon them you see what i mean so it's very very important for you to know that especially when you're going for the interview uh not to tell the consular that you plan to abandon your family because if you do it's a process i told you guys it's a process you get the the permanent residence you still have to apply for citizenship even if you don't want to apply for citizenship you still have to renew your green card that question might pop up because when you're filling out uh if you're applying for the citizenship there's a form called an n n400 the n400 when you fill it out uh you find that uh it asks about your family members about the address that they are living so if you just fill out your name just your name and your family members d and do not show up anywhere huh? or even your children they don't show up that they live in a certain address in the u.s then you will you'll be questioned you'll be asked what are you gonna say hmm? You cannot abandon your family unless they have said that they uh, they have decided that they are going to stay. Hmm? You cannot do that. That one is not going to work. Okay, and I had uh, someone uh, shared uh, that video over there, which was very, very, very good. Uh, so it's very, very important uh, to, do, to do that. Uh, so I'm a D minus project. Is there a way I can get a visa to the U U.S. To, pro to, to promote my living? Uh, please, uh, no, I don't think, uh, unless you get a green card, a DV lottery, a D plus, you might not get uh, to go because uh, maybe you, you want to apply for a student visa, unless you have been invited, <laughs> excuse me, unless you have been invited, uh, like a, a visitor's visa, that one, they, they might not look much, but if you are coming through education or anything else, you will not qualify, but for DV, you can qualify because they do not say, like, you have to be this level uh, for you. Uh, to be able to come. So uh, it's very, very, very important uh, for you uh, to think about that. Hmm? So uh, they don't they don't look at the grades. They do not look at the grades. Um, okay. Now, I have a question here. Is it the education certificate they need or the transcript study of your years in secondary school? They just need the certificate, the one that you get after Form 4. That's what they need. And the original one, you go and show that one. Uh, so that's very, very, very important uh, for you to do that. Um, so, hello, Charity. This is Dati Damuya Nyeusi. Oh, my gosh. Some names are weird. Okay. Hello, Charity. How How is it or difficult is it to date a white young lady after relocation to the U.S.? <gasps> As a young man, do they expect sex to fall in love with Africans? Do they eat fair? Uh, no, they don't eat fair, but uh, you have to know their culture because their culture is very, very different when you're dating them. And uh, you have to... I think I should talk about that in a whole new video about uh, dating uh, people who are immigrants here because you can date them. You can have a very good marriage with them, but you really, really, really need, need to know their culture because their culture is very, very different from the African culture. Very, very different. So you can. Love is love. Love does not know no boundaries. Love is love. And uh, uh, what I like about Americans is that they are very, very honest. And if something is wrong or they don't like something, they tell you to the face. Hmm? And uh, that's how most of us, when you come to the U.S., we are like, we just tell you to the face. You won't like us so much, but we'll just tell you to the face. And it's what it is. So <laughs> that's not about the... So somebody is saying eating fear is universal. On a light note, like, you know, it's not universal in the U.S. They don't do that. Mm? They don't. They don't. They, it's hard. It's very, 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 very hard uh, for them uh, to do that. But love knows uh, no boundaries. Okay, so I think I have answered most 
of the questions in the group and uh, i hope that you will watch this video guys uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll continue with another one so i hope that i have been able to help each one of you if I, I, I tried to look at every question and if i didn't mention your question uh, please type there and i will be ready to answer you so thank you and see you in another video and god bless you